Uh, this Hispanic, yeah, it's, 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 it's a part of my history. It's part of giving back to the community and helping our community remember where they where they come from. They're, you know, because we're we're in the metropolitan of Vancouver. Uh, first piece is that when we leave reserves or residential schools is our culture. Our culture stays. We leave it behind. And the old people used to say, we can't forget. We will never forget. In Ottawa, at the TRC, and they came out with the 94 recommendations and they said, you know, and I kind of read the pieces of it and they said the churches have to do their piece. The vision came from Kelvin, Kelvin B., uh, who's a Kwa Kwa, uh, Kwa, Kwa um, elder, who's a member here of the church. And it came from uh, in, um, coffee, he and Father Matthew. So they, they had coffee and talked about this, and then they brought it to me, and I said, okay, let's do it. The feast did not start as, you know, two institutions talking to each other. You know, it wasn't an Aboriginal organization and a church organization, you know, having a formal meeting or something. It began with a friendship between a residential school survivor and a priest. So today we're um, decorating the hall. We're so fortunate to have um, Nicole and her team of um, uh, volunteers from the Cultural Sharing Program at the Carnegie Community Centre, which is just a couple of blocks away. Nicole is Haida, and uh, many of the people are, are from various nations. So they're setting up the hall. Um, they're uh, decorating the tables, they're putting out the candles, they're uh, putting out the cedar, they're uh, putting out the banners. This is an event that's both um, Indigenous and church. So she's putting out the church banners as well as all the drums that, and blankets that have been made by the cultural sharing group. They're being hung on the walls as, as we speak. My participation, trying to make it almost um, feel as if it's a big house. So it's very West Coast style, the decorating that we're doing. Um, it, it could be very different from like different feasts across Canada. Each, each nation has a different decorating style. But the, I've gone for the West Coast because that's what I know. Because um, I'm from, my family's from Haida Gwaii. And we've, I've participated in many big house style feasts. This is an indigenous ceremony that's done um, the first time that the, the church is asking residential school survivors to sit down and have a conversation over a meal with us. Not tell me your story and oh, isn't that terrible. No, we've done that. This is the time for moving forward. Let's start a, a relationship that is as equal as possible. This is where Yvonne came in. Um, Yvonne Rigsby-Jones, who is with the um, Reconciliation Canada, she's a fabulous facilitator. And sh we did two sessions with the settlers here in the church and all the volunteers uh, to prepare them for intercultural conversations in a respectful way without dominating. Once people know the truth and know what happened, and know that it's really very wounded, hurt people that live, for instance, in the downtown east side, that their addiction is probably to cover horrendous, horrendous pain and dreadful things that were done to them. I've been part of those from the beginning, so I have um, been coming to St. James Church for uh, 38 years, so um, I'm a lifer at St. James, and so the elder spoke to to us saying he needed a, he'd like to honor the uh, residents and survivors, and that's how it germinated that uh, the community got together to support his his wish that uh, we have a celebration, not a not a a grieving kind of uh, ceremony, but an actual celebration of the the two worlds getting together. As we were approaching a few months ago, I started to panic to a certain extent. And at a meeting that we had, I, I raised it, you know, what, how many survivors are really going to come to this thing? How many are planning to come? And we were sitting around a table and I was clearly anxious. And um, 
Jerry Adams, uh, one of the um, a longtime member of this parish and an Aboriginal leader in our community, um, said, Father Matthew, it's going to be okay. We will come. The word is out and we will come and you don't have to worry about it. As we're all visitors to this great nation, this territory, the Kosalish, it's my privilege to welcome you here today, especially those of you who have served time, I call it time, in residential schools. This is your day. This afternoon with a special purpose to honor all survivors of the residential schools those who returned home and those who did not so first to all survivors welcome although we are here to honor you you in fact honor us with your presence thank you for coming I'm very pleased to be a part of this event. I've been looking forward to it for quite a, quite a long time. I'm the uh, grandson of a residential school survivor. And, uh, in, and in that way, uh, this is a very personal event for me, a very important one for me. I wanna thank you very, very much for including me, including my family uh, in, 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 this, in this gathering. I'm very, very blessed to be a part of it. Thank you very much. The people that stand behind me, part of the 
board of directors, I guess you would call it, Pat and all the people that work hard in this church 24-7 to make it run the way it does, just like a business. The difference is they're here to help us. Our people are hurting out there, and this team here in this church right now do that work outside the doors. Not just in the big great hall that's next door to us, their church, but also the church on the street. This is the team. Thank you. Wonderfully, wonderfully. I, I think it was a great thing for the church yeah. and a great thing for the community. This is a first for, for the church and I hope to see this be replicated across Canada because I think it's really important. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see what the future holds. If these people can see it, the rest of the, the rest of Canada can see it and feel it. And um, my hope and prayer is that people will do that. If we can find ways to love each other, respect each other, um, hold each other up and celebrate each other, we're, we're on the way to reconciliation. Of course, it means a lot of other things. When it comes to our relationships, Aboriginal, non-Aboriginal, there are specific things that we ought to be doing. But it always starts um, with transforming our relationships. And the only way that's ever going to happen is if we, we Canadians and Aboriginal people have a dialogue that creates deep understanding. We share our histories together, our hopes and our dreams and our aspirations, and we discover that there's a common humanity here that will begin to bind us as we find steps to reconciliation. We did this, and we did it by taking this step, and then this step, and then this step, and you just start one step after the other. My hope is that this will spread. This is a beginning. This is uh, St. James has started something to celebrate as opposed to um, try to fix the problem. We can't fix it. We can work with it and we can have fun. We can start playing together. I think that's what we need to do. We believe um, the kinds of relationships that we build today as Canadians, not just Indigenous people, not just non-Indigenous people, but everybody all together, the kinds of relationships that we form today are going to impact our children. They're watching.